Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing the mysterious signal known as BLC1, also known as Breakthrough Listen 1, because this was the signal detected last year that suggested an artificial signal, radio signal, coming from the nearby Proxima Centauri system, the signal that possessed all of the properties the scientists expect from an, some sort of artificial signal coming from another star system. Or in other words, there was a slight chance that it was actually aliens talking to us. But this was a very preliminary discovery and a lot of scientists decided to err on the side of caution. So until now, nobody really knew what it was. And it looks like, once again, it wasn't aliens. But nevertheless, it's important to talk about this just so we know what to look for next time. So first of all, let's do a bit of a background history. The original detection happened back in 2019 when the Australian Parks Observatory was conducting its regular observations during the project known as Breakthrough Listen. The project whose main purpose is to actually try to locate some sort of uh, alien civilization trying to communicate with us. And then in December of 2020, this is when the original report suggested that something unusual was detected coming from the region in the vicinity of Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to us, that we know contains at least two planets. And so even though it wasn't really possible to detect the exact location where it came from, it seemed to suggest it possibly came from Proxima Centauri. Here's by the way what the signal sort of looked like, and interestingly it also seemed to contain what's known as Doppler shift, which is the frequency shift caused by an object that's moving. And the frequency of the Doppler shift seemed to correlate with the motion of Proxima Centauri, which is why the scientists got so excited. And it also contained a lot of other so-called technosignatures. So for example, the frequency here was almost exactly 982 MHz. Although in the previous video that you should be able to find somewhere right there, I did explain that this frequency is often used in a lot of different devices here on planet Earth, which was kind of a hint that maybe this came from planet Earth after all. Nevertheless, there were quite a lot of other parameters that seemed to indicate that this could be a technosignature. So, for example, it only appeared when the scientists were looking at the direction of Proxima Centauri and disappeared when the telescope was looking somewhere else. It also occupied an extremely narrow band. The actual frequency was way too specific to be a natural source. This by itself already required a further investigation. Then, on top of this, over the period of about 5 hours, the signal also drifted. In other words, it suggested this was probably not coming from the surface of the planet. It was coming from outside of the planet, so somewhere from outer space. And because this signal lasted for several hours, this was unlikely to be a typical aircraft or even a typical satellite. As a matter of fact, there were several discussions on Twitter suggesting that there was no known satellite in this particular location at that particular time. Uh, unless I guess it was some sort of a secret satellite, which is always a possibility. But at the same time, there were still a lot of unanswered questions. For example, there were several flares detected around the same time coming from Proxima Centauri, so there was a suggestion that maybe this was related to the flares. At the same time, because of these flares, it's sort of to the belief that these planets are going to be extremely difficult to survive on, if not impossible. So at a distance of just over 4.2 light years away from us, even though this is a really exciting star system, it also is probably one of the most dangerous to live on. In other words, expecting life to survive on these planets at the moment is a bit of a stretch. Which is actually why Proxima Centauri, along with some other red dwarfs, are sometimes referred to as a flare star. They flare up so much that they release a tremendous amount of radiation. Nevertheless, it's the closest star, so this is probably the first object we'll ever get to visit if we get to visit anything at all. At the same time, it's kind of important to understand how this particular signal was originally discovered. The original analysis actually revealed approximately 4 million different signals, radio signals, from the same region. With essentially almost all of them completely ruled out as just natural signals coming from some sort of a natural source. And that's just to give you an idea of how many different signals can be detected coming from different areas. So these signals are not rare at all, they're very very common. But from these millions of signals, approximately 5000 looked kind of promising. These were the signals the scientists then referred to as the events. But once these events were filtered out manually, only a few remained with really only one of the signals making it through the entire analysis. In other words, this was the only signal that sort of appeared as a technosignature. Everything else ended up being either interference from planet Earth 
or in some cases just something natural. And now, just under a year after the original announcement, and I guess about two years after the original discovery, the scientists have confirmed that this is once again not a techno signature and not actually a signal coming from Proxima Centauri at all, and is instead a type of a radio interference that they've managed to detect in a lot of other signals and a lot of other observations. And the way that the scientists discovered this is by going through a lot more data from the Parkes Observatory and by looking at a lot of other frequencies. Discovering several other signals that look somewhat similar, as you can see there's one very very dim one right here, with dozens of similar lookalikes or signals that possess very similar properties discovered in this data. Okay, but I guess the question is, could they all be techno signatures coming from Proxima Centauri? Well, the answer seems to be no, because a lot of these signals were not actually coming from this region at all. They were determined to be coming from off-source. In other words, they were detected from other telescopes or from other directions. And more importantly, a lot of them had the same frequencies we usually use for radio communication in, for example, different satellites. And interestingly, the spacing between the frequencies here would actually consistent with a typical clock oscillator that's often used for different types of radio communication here on Earth. Which means that a lot of these other signals very very likely came from Earth and not from some other planet somewhere out there. And this of course implies that BLC1 is very likely a similar signal in nature. It's just a radio interference signal produced by something earthly, not something from Proxima Centauri. But to be fair, currently there is really no one source that has been discovered that was responsible for BLC1. But the scientists in the paper do kind of make a prediction of what's possibly causing all of these. This is a phenomenon that's usually referred to as intermodulation, a phenomenon that often affects radio transmission, but it's also something that musicians are quite familiar with as well. You can learn more about intermodulation in the link in the description below, but in a nutshell, when the amplitude of several nearby frequencies is changed, it can occasionally start forming additional components that were actually not there to begin with. And so by mixing two different frequencies, these particular phenomena are often observed in a lot of radio communication. And so in this case, this could totally come from a satellite or possibly even nearby earthly source that was creating these intermodulation frequencies simply because of a certain interference in the amplifier that this radio communication device was using. And because so many of these look-alike signals, very similar to BLC1, were detected in this new data, it's only natural to assume that this is something that's really common, but something that we just didn't really know much about until now. And so, at the moment, it's almost definitively not a signal from Proxima Centauri. But I'm sure in some of the future studies, someone more familiar with how intermodulation works and someone more familiar with radio frequencies might even work out the exact source of the signal and find out what satellite or what device possibly caused this. At the moment, it's not really known. But BLC1 is still a really, really interesting signal and it's a perfect case study for a lot of future detections that we're going to be making in the next few decades. And so even though we're obviously hoping to find some sort of a extraterrestrial species possibly sending radio signals to us, I guess at the moment it will be a little bit more exciting to actually discover where a lot of these lookalikes come from, which is of course really important to understand in order to avoid these mistakes in the future. But because of the advances in radio astronomy in the last few years, I'm sure we'll actually hear more about various signals and a lot of other unusual signals in the next few years as well. And so it's only a matter of time before a new video comes out that's going to be talking about some other unusual BLC2 signal. But until then, make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out all of the relevant links and studies in the description below, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.